In the 14th century, this area was terrorized by robber barons. In the 21st, it was bureaucrats. This is local history at its finest. I'm in the northwest of Bavaria, very close to the Hessian border, near the village of Niedersteinbach. But until a few years ago, some of these fields belonged to Hess, as is evidenced by these old border posts, which shouldn't be here anymore. So how did that come about? And while we're on the subject, what is the explanation for this border? There seems to be a finger-shaped piece of Hess pointing south, and in it, a few houses that belong to the Hessian municipality of Freigericht. This is what is known as a functional exclave. It's not actually separated from the rest of Hess, but if you're coming by road, the only way to get to it is through Bavaria. And what this means is that although administratively this whole area belongs to the Hessian municipality of Freigericht, it uses the postal code and the telephone area code of the Bavarian municipality of Mumbris. Let's begin by finding the ruins of Hüttengesee's castle. The entrance isn't easy to find, and the place is definitely not wheelchair accessible, and it's also full of stinging nettles, so I really wouldn't advise wearing shorts. And there's very little to see. It was only a tiny castle, originally probably little more than a fortified shelter for herdsmen. The first records of the castle date back to the year 1131, centuries before the modern states of Bavaria and Hesse existed with their insane border. But by 1403, it, together with some of the other castles in the area, was helping to secure the road. There was, though, a small problem. The 14th century saw a lot of changes. The feudal system was beginning to break down. The old subsistence economy was giving way to something more modern, based on trade and commerce. In this, the lower orders of the nobility saw a threat to their power and wealth, and so they decided to take steps to protect their privilege. Now, one of the things that they had was a right to uh, collect tolls. And so they decided to interpret those rights in ways that suited them. They started demanding ever more extortionate rates, and their methods of collection became increasingly violent. Later historians would refer to them as robber barons. They were a thorn in the flesh of their superiors, who decided that they would take steps to end this scourge. Mercenaries were deployed to put an end to the constant attacks on merchants in the area in what became known as the Veterao Vendetta. In early 1405, this resulted in the destruction of the castles in Mumbres, Vassalors and Hüttlengesees. Moving forward a century or two, and villages were organised into administrative units more or less similar to the hundreds in England. The hundreds of Alzenau, Hirschstein, Mömbris and Zomborn gained their imperial immediacy, meaning they were free from the authority of any local lord, and they came together to form the Free Court of Alzenau. This is why in modern times the villages on the Hessian side form the municipality of Freigericht. But this still doesn't explain the stupid border, and because I couldn't find that answer online, I had to spend a lot of time doing in-depth research. Here then is one possible explanation. Hüttengesees is in a small valley known locally as the Devil's Valley. The little brook that flows through it, the Geiselbach, formed the border between the hundreds of Zomborn and Krombach, with Hüttengesees under the jurisdiction of Krombach. During the 18th century, the Free Court was divided up between Mainz and Hesse Castle, with Zomborn and Alzenau going to Hesse Castle. And rather than carving up the Devil's Valley, it was decided to keep it all in one piece and give it all to Hess Castle as part of Zomborn. And this included the rights of herdsmen to use the pastures all the way down to the River Karl. 
In 1814, the state of Bavaria was expanded and acquired Mömbris and Krombach, and the border was drawn here. And that was fine. But just two years later, Alzenau also became Bavarian, and because by now the village of Alpstadt had come under Alzenau's jurisdiction, that left the border looking like this. This caused a problem, because it left a few hundred metres of the road in the state of Hesse. And unfortunately, its tight curves made it an accident black spot. Any accident that happened here happened in Freigericht, but the only way for the Freigericht emergency services to get there was via a long detour through Bavaria. Agreements were put in place, allowing local Bavarian emergency services to attend until the Hessians could get there, but it wasn't ideal. And the local sports club also liked to complain that while the clubhouse was in Bavaria, the playing field was in Hesse. Although, to be honest, only a German could think that a problem. So it was decided to solve the issue by redrawing the border. It would take the form of a land swap. A piece of Hessian land would be given to Bavaria, in return for which a similar piece of Bavarian land would become Hessian. But the original proposal would have meant this Schnapps distillery passing from Hesse to Bavaria, and there was a problem with that. Because regulations for distilleries vary from state to state, this one would suddenly become illegal overnight. After appeals to common sense failed, the owner hit upon a novel solution. He built a house. By law, land swaps cannot involve any residential properties, and so the bureaucrats were forced to change their plans. The new border finally came into effect in 2011, with the road and the sports ground fully in Bavaria, but the Schnapps distillery still in Hesse. So this is the situation right now. But apparently, more than a decade later, Google Maps still hasn't got the message. Never mind though, just look at the scenery. Thank you for watching. There's a very old video of mine about a local legend that I think you might find interesting, so I've linked to it down below. Down there. <laughs>